Yeah, thank you for the introduction. So, uh, yes, my talk is about uh, the end-to-end -end security of group chats, especially in instant messaging. And this is joint work together with Christian Meinka and Jörg Schwenk. So, last year at Real World Crypto, there was a talk on the provable security of the Signal Key Exchange. And since WhatsApp implements the Signal Key Exchange, the result was that what WhatsApp is doing is good. Um, and in contrast to this, what we kind of found out about the group communication protocol uh, in WhatsApp and also partially in Signal was at least not as secure as uh, we expected. So if you talk about um, group chats, we talk about dynamic groups of users. So users can be added to groups to become members, but uh, they can also leave groups. And all users uh, of one protocol uh, are assumed to communicate uh, via one central server. So this is motivated by the fact that modern uh, instant messaging protocols are structured in this architecture. And we call uh, group instant messaging secure if not only attackers on the network are defended by yeah, transport uh, layer protection, but also uh, the layer uh, among the users from one end to another uh, is protected such that pot potentially malicious servers uh, are defended. So the outline for this talk is I first present the security model uh, containing the security goals which we require to be achieved and uh, the attackers which we regard. Then I will sketch the protocols that we analyzed. Uh, these are Signal and WhatsApp. And due to the time restrictions, I will exclude Threema. And after sketching them, I will uh, describe uh, weaknesses regarding uh, traceable delivery and closeness, which are the security goals which I will focus on during this talk. And after describing the weaknesses, I will explain the, the underlying problems and propose uh, possible solutions to enhance the protocols respectively. So uh, the security goals which we regard uh, can be split into confidentiality goals and integrity goals. And I guess the first two are commonly known here. So message confidentiality means that only the communicating parties um, know uh, the messages that are communicated. And message authentication means that the messages are, are neither forged nor manipulated in transmission. And both of these, uh, both of these goals can be uh, applied to the two-party scenario as well as the group scenario. Uh, and this also holds for the next two reliability goals, node application and traceable delivery. Uh, node application means that if a message is sent once, then it's at, at most uh, received once by its receivers. And traceable delivery, which is one of the focus goals, uh, means that, so you probably know these check marks in uh, WhatsApp and Signal. And uh, traceable delivery uh, requires that these tr uh, check marks are valid. So. Uh, a receipt is only indicated if all the receivers receive the respective message. Uh, to capture the group setting, uh, we add these following two uh, security goals, closeness and no creation. Uh, I first, first explain no creation. No creation means that um, only members of a group can communicate among each other. So all outsiders uh, cannot contribute to the conversation within the group if they are not a member. And closeness, which is the second focus of this talk, um, means that only the members of a group, or if there exists an administrator, then only the administrator can decide who becomes a member of a group. So outsiders cannot join a group uh, if they were not uh, invited and thereby were not added uh, by one of these uh, either members or administrator. And we want these goals to be achieved against the following two attackers. The first one is uh, the malicious server, and the malicious server is uh, defined to be able to decrypt the transport layer protection and thereby manipulate or drop messages uh, without the transport layer protection uh, being applied. And yeah, practical examples are the instant messaging provider itself or someone who is, for example, able to forge TLS certificates on the network. And what uh, my presentation will, yeah, kind of show is that traceable delivery is neither, neither reached by Signal nor by WhatsApp, so that means that these uh, check marks can be forged by the malicious server such that drop, uh, messages can be dropped without being detected by a user. And in addition to that, uh, WhatsApp does not reach closeness, and this means that the WhatsApp server can add herself uh, to the group without being invited uh, to the group. 
The second attacker which we regard is the compromising attacker, and the compromising attacker has uh, the ability to obtain secrets for a short time frame uh, from the users that communicate. And this is motivated by, for example, um, yeah, me losing my smartphone and thereby someone who finds the smartphone obtains the secrets that are stored on the smartphone, or someone installing a virus on my smartphone that uh, leaks the secrets towards the attacker, or someone uh, yeah, brute forcing certain secrets uh, that are used for a short time frame. Uh, yeah, and thereby these secrets are leaked. And linked uh, to this attacker are the following two advanced uh, security goals, forward secrecy and future secrecy. Forward secrecy means that if I communicate uh, today with my smartphone and yeah, tomorrow my smartphone is stolen, uh, then the secrets that are stored on my smartphone and thereby obtained by uh, the attacker cannot be used to gain any information on my previous co uh, communication. So somehow the secrets uh, that are used for communication today are invalidated on the smartphone such that uh, past communication stays secure. Uh, future secrecy, which is also known as post-compromise security or backward secrecy, means that if I, for example, check in at the airport, and um, thereby I have to hand over my uh, smartphone to the police and the police makes a copy of the secrets um, and I get back my smartphone and start communicating again, then somehow the protocol um, recovers uh, into a secure mode such that future communication becomes secure again. And even though the signal protocol reaches uh, future secrecy in the two-party scenario, uh, which was shown by the work uh, last year, um, we show that Signal does not reach closeness against the compromising attacker and thereby some of conf somehow confidentiality is not really reached uh, against the compromising attacker. In order to understand the weaknesses uh, that I just sketched, um, I first uh, present you uh, the protocols. So first of all, the Signal protocol. So if a user Alice uh, wants to send a message M to group G, uh, of which she and Bob, Charlie and Dave our uh, members, she encrypts this message together with a timestamp and the static group ID and encrypts the ma these, yeah, these three value values to each of the three remaining members. And therefore, Alice will use the communication channels for direct communication. Uh, and this communication channel uh, has forward uh, and future secrecy, uh, secrecy as properties. Um, and thereby, the group ID uh, kind of serves as a proof of membership. So if Bob, Charlie, and Dave receive the ciphertext and decrypt it, they will check if the group ID matches the group, and if this is the case, they will accept it as a group message. And after doing so, uh, Bob, Charlie, and Dave will reply with an acknowledgement that contains the sender ID, the receiver ID, and the message timestamp. And this acknowledgement, or these acknowledgements, are then sent back to Alice, and as soon as Alice received all acknowledgements, um, yeah, the receipt of the message will be indicated. If Alice, instead of sending a content message, wants to send a group update message, so uh, she wants, for example, to add a new user Eve to group G, she encodes this information within the message and then encrypts uh, this information again together with a timestamp and the group ID to each respective uh, uh, member of the group and yeah, as soon as they will decrypt the message or the ciphertext, they will accept uh, the new user Eve as new group member of group G. So um, the first uh, weakness that I present starts with uh, the malicious server dropping the ciphertext to Dave. Now Dave uh, will of course not reply with an acknowledgement and therefore Alice uh, will not indicate the message to be received. But since the acknowledgement only contains information that the malicious server knows, uh, namely the sender ID, the receiver ID, and the message timestamp, the server can yeah, directly forge this acknowledgement and send it to Alice such that Alice will indicate the receipt, even though uh, the ciphertext and thereby the message was never seen by uh, user Dave. And consequently, traceable delivery is not reached in signal against the malicious server. Uh, the second weakness starts with a compromise of one of the group users, in this case, uh, yeah, Alice. And thereby, among other secrets, uh, the group ID of group G is leaked towards the attacker. Now, the attacker can use this group ID to create the following uh, group message 
that says that a user S, which is in this case the server, uh, is added to the group G. Now, this information of adding S together with the timestamp and the group ID is now encrypted by user S to every remaining member of the group. Now, since the group ID is correct, um, Alice, Bob, Charlie, and Dave uh, will receive the ciphertext decrypted and accept it as a correct group update message, and thereby the server will become a member of the group without being invited uh, by one of the group members. So, consequently, closeness is not reached against the compromising attacker in Signal. Um, the next slide uh, uh, aims to somehow explain the differences between the WhatsApp protocol and the Signal protocol. And there are two major differences. The first one is uh, that instead of encrypting a group message to every um, remaining member of a group uh, separately, in WhatsApp, uh, the message only needs to be encrypted once. And this is because every group member maintains uh, a group sender state. And this group sender state is, um, yeah, created once uh, uh, and then distributed to all remaining members. And since this uh, sender state is symmetric, Alice can use it for encryption and the remaining users can use it for decryption. So consequently, only one ciphertext is sent by Alice instead of three. Uh, the second uh, difference is that group updates are not uh, encrypted, but sent plain to the server, and then yeah, the server will forward uh, the, the, the information of a group update. Now, since the acknowledgements and the group updates are not protected, they can both be forged, such that tra traceable delivery and closeness are both not reached uh, against the malicious server in WhatsApp. So, what are the underlying problems? Uh, the first problem for not reaching traceable delivery is that the acknowledgements in both protocols are not authenticated. But there exist two ways uh, within the protocol that protocols that could be used uh, for authentication. So, the first one is simply um, treating the acknowledgements as normal content messages and thereby encrypting them. And since the protocols uh, implement authenticated encryption, these acknowledgements would be authenticated directly. A second way would be uh, in WhatsApp using the signature key pairs uh, that uh, every group member in the WhatsApp protocol uh, maintains. So thereby authenticity would again be reached. Now what we propose is uh, enhancing the protocols and making them more effective by um, using the properties of the signal key exchange that is both uh, implemented by Signal and WhatsApp and thereby using uh, the key streams that are thereby, thereby implied. So, um, if Alice and Bob communicate in WhatsApp or Signal, they have both an established state that also contains a key, K0, uh, that is uh, equal for both users. So, if Alice wants to send a message M1, she first derives a K0, uh, a K1 from K0, and uses this K1 for encryption to obtain ciphertext 1. Then Alice will send this ciphertext one together with the information uh, which key she was using, uh, which is in this case K1. Now Bob will derive the same K1 from K0 and use it for decryption and to obtain message one. Now uh, suppose Alice uh, wants to send a message M2, she will repeat these steps, uh, derive a K2 and use it for uh, encryption. Uh, but now assume that the ciphertext that is uh, the result of this um, is dropped on the network and never forwarded uh, to Bob. Uh, now, if Alice wants to send a third message, she again repeats it, derives K3 from K2, and uses it for encryption and sends the ciphertext to Bob. Now, Bob, of course, knows that um, K2 will not be usable to... Um, decrypt ciphertext 3 to obtain message 3. So first of all, K2 is derived from K1, and then K3 is uh, obtained by deriving it from K2. And this K3 can then be used for decryption. But the problem of the both protocols it, is that the information that K2 was never used for decryption is simply ignored. So what we propose is, first of all, um, acknowledging the latest in order received message and this is in this case message one and this information this acknowledgement does not need to be uh, sent explicitly but could also be embedded uh, within the next content message and thereby the message complexity of the protocols would be reduced 
The second thing which we propose is that some kind of a neg negative acknowledgement is sent back to the original sender as soon as a key was derived um, and the previous key which was also derived was not used for decryption. So this information that a message was possibly dropped uh, is used by the protocols. Um, yeah, so this one is then sent back to Alice and Alice would know that she has to res resend message too. In order to understand the problems why closeness uh, is not reached in the protocols, first uh, it needs to be understood how the protocols treat group messages. And this, uh, there are two different approaches. We call them the guestless approach and the ticket approach. And the guestless approach, uh, which is implemented by WhatsApp, means that every group member maintains a list of the remaining group members. And as soon as a member receives a group message, uh, this list of members is checked for the sender, and if the sender is on this group list, this message is accepted as a group message. Um, in Signal, in contrast to this, the ticket approach um, is used. So this means the group ID serves like a ticket uh, that proves that the sender um, is in the group. So if the group and thereby the ticket is correct, then the message is accepted as a group message. But the problems are that the guest list in WhatsApp is manipulable by the server. And the problem in Signal is that the group ID is static and thereby future secrecy cannot be reached uh, by the protocol. So uh, what we propose uh, in order to uh, reach closeness is first of all authenticating the group update messages in WhatsApp. And there are plenty of ways, as I said, uh, for the acknowledgements and traceable delivery. In addition to that, um, some kind of guarantees on the termination um, of group updates or group update operations needs to be um, yeah, yeah, given for the sender or someone else who is responsible for observing what happens in the group. And therefore, we kind of need uh, causality. But um, yeah, as we discussed with Moxie Marlin Spike um, during our responsible disclosure, uh, we, of course, want that um, in instant messaging, message are, messages are instantly delivered. So independent of in which order they were sent, they need to be uh, distributed uh, to the receiver. So, yeah, reordering, delay, or loss of, uh, loss of uh, messages is accepted as normal operations. So causality as an ordering goal cannot be, yeah, cannot be required uh, in instant messaging. But uh, therefore, we at least uh, require traceable delivery since therefore um, the sender or yeah, in a gen generic protocol, someone would be informed um, just yeah, reliably uh, on the termination of a group up, uh, update operation. The same needs to hold for the ticket approach, but in addition to that, uh, the, yeah, the group secret uh, or in the signal protocol, the group ID, needs to be updated such that future secrecy can be reached. And there is work on this and the, in the uh, group key exchange literature. And I, uh, yeah, I added there two uh, papers. <coughs> and uh, what I saw on the train to Zurich is that the results of the second paper um, yeah, were recently published on GitHub uh, by the Facebook res uh, research team. So I think there is progress in the right direction. Uh, to summarize and yeah, our, this, this talk and uh, our contributions, um, first we present and yeah, worked out a model for group instant messaging that covers both security and reliability. And since we focus on the instant messaging, so the instant delivery of messages, uh, this model can be used for uh, developing and analyzing real-world protocols. Then we described three major instant messaging protocols, of which two are uh, closed source software, and uh, none of them was uh, formally described um, in, yeah, in a way. So this required uh, some reverse engineering. And finally, we applied uh, this model to these three protocols and revealed that at least what we were requiring and what we were expecting was not reached um, by these protocols. And this is some kind of a sketch of our results and uh, of the weaknesses that we found. So the full work can be found uh, on ePrint. And of course, you can contact me. So thank you very much for the attention. Thanks, Paul. OK, questions for Paul? OK, I'll start. 
Um, so in the attack where the server was adding themselves, can you pop back to that slide? I try to, yeah. Uh, in six, well, I guess, this one. Yes, so the notation E sub S, that means S is doing the encryption yes. with authentication, like that's AAD. Yes. So all the clients know that S sent it, they yes, just that's true. helpfully ignore that fact? Uh, so uh, when we were uh, analyzing the protocol, there was no information on who uh, was initiating the group update operation, so it was just an information that someone added uh, ETH, or in this case S, to the group. Uh, but uh, currently uh, this is indicated in the protocol, but since uh, messages can be dropped uh, on the network, uh, yeah, the information uh, or the communication can be kind of disrupted such that maybe not all of the members will understand uh, what happened. Right. What, what, if, what if Alice sends a message to the, like B, C, and D saying to add herself to a group? Like Alice, Bob, Charlie, and Dave are part of a group, mm -hmm. but B, C, and D are also part of another group Alice isn't part of. And then Alice sends that very message, but adding herself, would that? Yeah, for this, uh, of course, she has to know the, uh, the group ID of the other group of which she's not a member. So she, again, needs to compromise one of the, ah, the okay. other group members. And so. the group ID is a big random nonce. It's not like yes, four. Yes, true. Okay. Yeah. okay, good. Any other questions? Anyone up top? No? All right, let's thank Paul again. <laughs>